Yes, a very good afternoon and many thanks for staying with us right here on the number one TV station in the country, all the world, if you will, and TV Uganda. My name is Romeo Busuka and of course I'm coming to you yet again with another pertinent conversation focusing on the rationalization of government agencies, commissions, authorities, and so forth, including public expenditure. Of course, Cabinet took a decision that is on February 22nd, this very year, 2021, under minute number 43, to actually, yes, merge mainstream and also rationalize government agencies, commissions, and authorities in that regard, including public expenditure. Why was this rationalization expedited in the first place? That is the $64,000 question that is going to be unpacked by the Honorable State Minister for Public Service, that is Honorable Mugasa Grace Mary. She's with us right now. And also the Institutional Assessment Acting Commissioner in the Ministry of Public Service, Mr. Sifuna Fred Bob, is also with us to unpack this issue of rationalization. Welcome aboard. Good afternoon. Yes, my guests, a very good afternoon to you, Honorable Minister. Yes, good afternoon. Mugasa, indeed. Good afternoon, viewers. <coughs> indeed. A very good afternoon, Mr. Sifu. Uh, good afternoon, viewers. Indeed. Thank you. Let's kick off with a very, very basic question. The mandate, the overall mandate of public service. What is entailed in your docket? Yeah, thank you very much, um, our dear viewers. The Ministry of Public Service is basically dealing with human resource management. Indeed. And uh, indeed, they streamline all the laws, policies, the structures, salary management of public service. But we also do building capacity of our human resources in public service. Uh, we do it through many ways, uh, through the Civil Service College of Jinja, and we do caravan trainings, but sometimes they also go to Jinja for trainings. We also keep records in the archives. Uh, and uh, we also do uh, many things like uh, monitoring, service delivery, mm -hmm. inspections, and many others. Indeed. And indeed, uh, we are mandated now, because we do human resource management under NDP3, the NRM manifesto, to do public sector transformation. Under public sector transformation is where we are mandated under the cabinet number 53 of 2018 mm. and cabinet number 43 of 2021 mm. where we are directed by cabinet to do rationalization of government agencies in the move to organize institutions, mm. uh, function arrangements of those institutions and specifically in terms of structures, Indeed. public service delivery systems and processes to make them adequately respond to the mm. delivery of services. Mm. And the aim of government uh, to make government institutions more efficient, effective, by eliminating duplications, overlaps, ambiguities, and wastage of public resources. Indeed. Yes. Let us focus on minute number 43 that was reached in, uh, on the 22nd of February this very year, where action was taken to merge mainstream and also um, cut down on the number of agencies, commissions, and also authorities that we have in this country. Mm -hmm. um, what is rationalization, Honorable Mogase, and what is the overall objective of this rationalization? Yeah, rationalization, as already alluded to, uh, it is a move by government to reorganize institutional and functional arrangement of its, institu of its institutions, mm. specifically in terms of structures, mm. public service delivery systems, and processes to make them adequately respond mm. to service delivery. Mm. Their aim is to make government institutions more efficient and effective by eliminating duplications, overlaps, and wastages. Mm. Yes. Let's also bring in Mr. Sifon of Fred Bob. Mr. Sifon of Fred Bob, there's been some kind of resistance towards uh, this initiative from 2017. 2018, 2019, we did see the former Right Honorable Prime Minister, Ruhakana Rugunda, on this. The President had directed to him to work on it. Let's talk about why it has taken too long for it to be implemented up to now. Yeah, thank you. At uh, least up to 2021, when the minutes were actually reached. Mm. Thank you, viewers. As the government, mm. or implementers of government uh, decisions, mm. we have to tread very carefully mm. because this rationalization process has got a lot of implications mm. on people's livelihood mm. and the economy. So, 
there's no point rushing with it. Mm -hmm. Every step you take must be really looked through. So the delay the was intentional. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that you, the decisions we come up with, I see. Uh, for instance, at the end of the day, as you know, this mm -hmm. is a mega reform. Mm -hmm. And every reform has got two sides. It has got victims and beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. And those who may be victims, not that they are being sacrificed, they are also citizens of this country. Mm -hmm. We need to deal with that process so that they are seen to be part of the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. Just not throwing them out. Mm. So that's why we have been moving cautiously. My minister here told you we have been having discussions with mm. these entities which were affected by the decision mm. of 20, of 20 of February. Mm. So that after that, we again consolidate all these recommendations on each of these entities mm. and take them to cabinet again for a final decision mm. so to pave way for implementation. Mm. So. The delay is no, has been deliberate mm. to make sure that everything is done properly. Finance is issues which have got financial implications need to get advice mm. from means of finance. Mm. Issues which have got to do with legal matters, we have got attorney general. Mm. Issues to do with local government, means of local government is there. Mm. Issues to do with foreign affairs, we are in touch with foreign affairs. Mm. Issues to do with gender, because at the end of the day, we don't want to go against the laws that lead to industrial relations. Indeed. Yeah, so Mr. that's why. Mr. Sefuda, when you say that rationalization is intended to do away with the wasteful public expenditure, yes. the viewer knows exactly what you mean. But when you say structural ambiguities, what exactly do you mean? When you say functional uh, duplications, what do you mean? And also overlaps? Let me start by giving an example. Structural ambiguity. Yes. Start from there. You know Kitugum House. Mm. We have got traffic lights there. Mm. We also have traffic officers there. Indeed. Apparently issuing contradictory instructions. Indeed. Indeed. So that's a key example of a duplication. I hear you. You go to and we pay for the lights, mm -hmm. which is a cost, mm -hmm. and we pay allowances to the police officers. Indeed. Instead of allowing as a police officer to operate and you pay one allowance. Mm. Or the lights so that you pay only for power. Indeed. But you see, you are paying it for power, you are paying for uh, 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 allowance for police officers. Structure now, ambiguities. Mm. what I mean, you get like a Ministry of Water and Environment, as an example. It has got a Directorate of Environment mm. with three departments forestry, mm. wetlands, and environment itself. Mm. Then you, outside the Ministry, you have got NEMA. Then you've got NFA. Apparently, you're dealing with the same sector. Mm. And could they, they, these three uh, entities are competing with for resources, for bigger resources. The minister wants, mm. NEMA wants, NSF wants. Some of the resources are local. Others come from development partners. So Indeed. we want to rationalize so that we avoid, at the end of the day, if there's something wrong with the environment, where do you point the figure? Mm. Is it at the ministry? Is it at NEMA? Is it mm. at the NFA? Mm. You find that the law which created NEMA mandated it to do certain things, but it has gone into implementation. Mm. NEMA is not supposed to implement as an example. For instance, if activities of agriculture are degrading the environment, then NEMA's role is to sell. Means agriculture, your activities are degrading mm. this environment. Mm. If activities of means of works are degrading the environment, they're supposed to bring to your attention not to participate in implementation. I hear you. But uh, you see they are in policy, they are in implementation. Mm. You see them also involved in tree planting. Functional with, duplication. Yes. Mm. Which is a duplication and causing if there's a credit, who takes it? Mm. Is it an MI, is it NFA, mm. is it the ministry? Mm. So those are the things which you want to put together so that at the end of the day you know if there's a blame, you know who to blame. Mm. If there's a credit, you know who takes the credit. Mm. And to make government visible strong, if they know government is the one doing this it's like you, when you put up a school in your area. Okay. So this is Sifuna's school. But if government goes and puts up a school, it creates a big difference. Mm -hmm. It's a government school. Indeed. So that is what we are doing under this. And this is what used to be the case before, a gentilization process. Mm -hmm. They were not there. But uh, because of some reasons in the early 90s, they started coming in to be in implementation, mm. which was okay, mm. to supplement, to move away from the bureaucracies of mm. mainstream. But along the way, mm. this agency lost track. They started going into things of salary. Mm. You get it? Indeed. 
just get created an act and then you pay yourselves. Mm. Some people who were being castigated for poor performance in the ministry, they were same people who go there to, to get better pay. So pay at the, at the end of the day made them lose focus. And at the end of the day, the president was asking, why should you have somebody participating in police formulation? Mm. Then he comes this way to participate in, in implementation. So I want to know, want to rationalize and say, okay, policy is here, implementation is here, mm. so that there is no collision. But at the end, but what is now happening is, because they lost, mm. many of them lost, others are doing well. Mm. I'm not saying all of them are bad. Mm. Some are doing a good job, mm. and those have been retained. Those that have been retained, if you are strategic, you are retained. Mm. If you are money making, you are retained. If you are a candidate to receive like uh, works, it's going to receive UNRWA, you are retained. Mm. There are certain institutions like uh, universities, they are strategic. Indeed. So those are retained. That is Mr. Sifuna Fred Bob, the <clears throat> acting commissioner in charge of institutional assessment at the Ministry of Public Service. Thank you very much for that humble submission. In our midst, we also do have Honorable Mary Grace Mugasa, the State Minister for Public Service. Honorable Mary Grace Mugasa, I would like yes. to talk about another issue. There is pushback from the NGOs. Um, I was talking to, that is, Godbert Mushabe, the yes. Associate Director for the Great Lakes Institute for Strategic Studies, and he says rationalization might not work as long as President Museveni has so many powers and they are not trimmed as long as he still has the powers to actually create units under him uh, these NGOs say it might be so hard for this rationalization to be implemented or even to bear any fruit what do you make of that yeah rationalization is going to bear fruit uh, simply because President Museveni himself was the one who raised an alarm in 2017 mm -hmm. by a letter that can be quoted Indeed. therefore he's very committed to mm -hmm. service delivery mm -hmm. which is seamless amazing he noticed that there were a lot of duplications mm. and yet services were not seamlessly coordinated. Mm. Therefore, he, he rose that alarm and indeed uh, rationalization is going to take shape because we are supposed to rationalize uh, 68 agencies. Indeed. At the moment, we have worked on 54, meaning we are moving forward and we are going to take those to cabinet for approval and the process will be kick-started. Mm. Therefore, Honor, uh, the, uh, the president of Uganda is very committed. Mm. And indeed, the ministry he created, which is the Ministry of Science and Technology, mm. he abolished and took it under mm. State House, meaning he's very committed and his own ministry was taken under State House. Indeed. It is being managed there. How is this rationalization being expedited, Honorable Mugasa? Uh, rationalization is being expedited. Mm. Uh, we, we started, first of all, with that cabinet directive. Mm. Uh, secondly, uh, a cabinet subcommittee was constituted. Mm. And uh, secondly, an interministerial technical committee was also constituted. Then we embarked on meetings, okay. consultations, mm. harmonization. We have had several meetings with the technical persons, with the ministers themselves, and uh, we have harmonized most of the agencies that are about to be rationalized, merged, or mainstreamed. So, Ministry of uh, Public Service is spearheading, mm. uh, then um, Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs, Minister of Defense and Veteran Affairs, Minister of, uh, of Local Government, mm. uh, Ministry of Gender, Labor, and Social Development, Minister of Internal Affairs, uh, uh, Foreign Affairs. So, all of us are working together to make sure we complement each other in terms of uh, looking at the legal framework, the nitty gritties, mm. because each ministry has its own expertise. Mm. Uh, Durafa, we want to assure you that the process is moving on well and we are about to send a cabinet paper for approval mm. when we get uh, our certificate of financial implication because the Minister of Finance is there. Yes, Stephanie. The one who is doubting, mm. I want to assure you today and now mm. that between then and now, when this process started, there has been a lot of lobbying by these entities mm. going up to the president himself. And he has said, no, we must rationalize the government structures. Indeed. I remember Eco Opportunities Commission was adamant to join Uganda Human Rights yes. Commission and was all haywire. Others, Others are using our development partners yes. to lobby. Mm. And the president has said, no, 
there's a problem here which we must deal what with. What are their reasons against the rationalization? They were telling you that they are, how they are performing very well, better than the civil service, that <laughs> they cannot go back to the civil service yes. where they were and the issues which were, which were affecting their performance have not been sorted. Hmm. But we have moved on. And on the question of law, the president who governed very well hmm. must have adequate authority yes. in terms of law. Mm. Otherwise, you may not, you may not govern. Mm. So a president who is weak in terms of the authority that he has conferred upon him by mm. the law, then he may not do much. Mm. Mr. Sifuna, it seems like all these problems were birthed in the early 1990s, especially with the Constitution. It seems like the Constitution protected most of these, the creation of these commissions at the time. Mm -hmm. And that's why we had so many people taking advantage and creating duplications as time went by. Talk to us about that time. That, yes, you're right. We have got... Uh, and about five or six mm. commissions, authorities, which mm. are created by the Constitution. Indeed. But the majority of them were duplicated, were, were duplicated, were created by the lower laws, acts Indeed. of parliament. Because they would look, somebody would say, oh, I think government is not about to pay a good salary. <laughs> Why don't we create this authority? <laughs> and then how you create an authority and you continuing the work you have left behind. Mm. So that's how duplication has been maintained within the system mm. and the distortion of the salary structure. Mm. People who are in the mainstream or the public servants who are in the mainstream, the salaries are still low. Mm. And of course, the, there is a problem. You see somebody you supervise, in, mm. for instance, you are a, mm. somebody who is doing a clerical job is earning much more than a commissioner. Indeed. But of course, of course, the motivation is not about pay. But that is how things have been moving. Mm. We want to move together, like my minister is saying, at the end of the day, part of the savings will be used to enhance mm. salaries of public servants who are in the mainstream, mm. so that we move together. Mm. Yes. Let's move together, bring those agencies that are still fighting this idea of rationalization onto the same book. Mm. Let's give them reason as to why they should actually join this rationalization. Give us a worst case scenario that would befall this nation if we continued mm. having these extra administrative units, these extra agencies, commissions, authorities taking center stage in a country that is largely strained with a small budget. Maybe worst case scenario. We have got the Lord, the Lord mm. Fund. Mm. It's affiliated to the Minister of Finance. But the Lord is supposed to be under the Minister of what? Indeed. When you look at the law that creates that fund, it's funny. It's, uh, the law mandates it only to get money mm. from government Indeed. and pass it over to service pro providers, I see. Which, is, uh, which is very funny, really. And that this money should have been channeled through the line ministry, or Minister of Finance should be given should be giving this money to UNRWA. Mm. But now this agency gets the money from finance or government to pass it over to UNRWA. Mm. UNRWA passes it over to, to 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 the service providers. So we have got many of such cases, mm. and you see, the, you may find that such an agency has more money than a bigger ministry. And most of this money is uh, spent on administration, big salaries, allowances, mm. travel in and uh, abroad. Mm. And of, of course, with a little budget to do service delivery. Mm. So this was just a conduit. We are also saying the same thing of UNRWA. Why don't you go to, we used to have very good roads done by engineers. Mm. But now we have got people with PhD, masters in engineering. But look what the, the roads they're doing. Mm -hmm. Look what the roads in the city here. You see, and we need to, I don't want to talk politically, government must be strengthened mm -hmm. to take charge of its role. It must be present mm -hmm. to be able to, the citizens to know that, yes, this is what the government is doing for us. Instead of doting, fragmenting things, mm -hmm. you go to Minister of Labor. In other words, worst case scenario, mm. they have got uh, youth council. Mm. The minister has a department for youth. Mm. They have got women council. The minister has a department for women. Mm. They have got uh, a council for disabilities. The ministry has. Mm. There are about five councils. Indeed. One time when I was interviewing them, he said, who is responsible for the children? The guy put up his hand. Said, I'm so responsible for these children, the Kujongs I saw on the streets. Mm -hmm. If you cannot solve the problems of children within Kampala here, mm -hmm. near Simbamanya, where mm -hmm. you are, Indeed. which children are you focusing on? I hear you. He kept he quiet. He kept mm -hmm. quiet.
So we have got men of such, mm. and it's against that, in the wisdom of the president, mm. said, no, I think there's something wrong. Mm. The youth council are doing what they are doing, actually doing virtually nothing. Mm. The department in the ministry also doing the same mm. thing. So, but all of them get money from the same source, mm. the consolidated fund. Indeed. And we are saying, you know, let the functions remain. Mm. Whatever is being done at the youth council, so that we know one person is the one doing, without losing mm. all the functions, technical functions, that the way that they are performing will remain. Mm. But we're saying now, instead of Sifuna and uh, my minister here getting money from the same source, mm. apparently doing the same thing, mm. and not very well, mm. let's have one person, the one responsibility center. Mm. If the problem is fixed, the, the blair, they, they take the credit. If there's a problem, we point fingers at them. Indeed. That is Sifuna Fred Bob. Uh, Honorable Mogase, he's talking about a very, very good and challenging issue in this fact. Fu functional, you know, duplications, uh, structural ambiguities, and also overlaps in that regard. You can also interest us by reacting to his submission, giving us also live examples of how uh, this situation might actually degenerate into something worse if we do not actually go ahead with this rationalization now more than ever. Yeah, actually, we, we cannot let it go. Mm. Uh, uh, the other side uh, of, of, of not being implemented. Mm. Because that's why we have authority as government mm. and we are the ones in charge of everything. Mm. Every agency is getting money through Ministry of Finance. Indeed. Therefore, they, there is no way they can claim to be autonomous. Mm. If Ministry of Finance does not approve the loans they are getting from either World Bank mm. or anywhere else, mm. that means they cannot function. Indeed. Therefore, it is government that created, and it is government that is doing evaluation mm. that indeed what we intended to do mm. is not achieved. Mm. Therefore, we are taking them back. Mm. We are not abolishing their services mm. because indeed we have to appreciate them. They have corporate governance. This very corporate governance should be taken under the ministry indeed. to avoid uh, duplications, to avoid wastages, mm. and. We should channel the money to service delivery, actual service delivery, instead mm. of public expenditure on management, on paying salaries. So we are, we are going to, to, to rationalize, mainstream, merge, and transfer services Indeed. of these mm. agencies. And of course, the viewer who is watching this show right now would like to know some of the challenges you've encountered while implementing uh, this rationalization process. Yeah, honestly speaking, uh, we, we, first of all, we delayed to start. Indeed. We delayed to start. Why? And uh, as uh, our technical person told you, mm. that we delayed to start. Strategic. Delayed. Strategically, because mm. uh, this is going to affect many people. Mm. It is, uh, we, we had to begin by setting the mind mm. change, uh, notifying the agencies that will be affected. Mm. But of course they had to make a research first, which one will match with what, mm. uh, who are duplicating what. So they had to make a lot of study. And the, ta the challenges here are loss of jobs and, re and source a source of livelihood for the affected parties mm. and loss of highly skilled personnel as a result of rationalization mm. in case we don't do it properly. Mm. Then we also uh, have bureaucratic tendencies in the mainstream public service which may derail the decision-making process mm. because people have been complaining about the red tape, the ministries delay to, to reply letters, to, mm. to take action. But we also have mitigation measures towards mm. that. Then we also have a fear of legal constraints and procedures of abolishing, merging and mainstreaming some of the entities. We, we fear court challenges, including injunctions and lawsuits from the affected persons. Then there is also a possibility of resistance to mm. change. Indeed. But we really have mitigation measures. The mitigation measures, we plan to transfer the technical staff alongside the functions, mm. those who are willing, mm. because they have been used to a lot of salary, they've been paid heavily, and uh, we are standardizing, we are harmonizing, mm. so that across the entire public service, we can work together in terms of remuneration. Mm. Therefore, uh, our ministry and other ministries are working together to make sure we establish the new structures that will accommodate everybody. Mm. Then we, uh, we are also implementing, we are the, the implementation team is going to undertake business process reviews mm. 
and re-engineering. Then the implementation team has a subcommittee to handle the legal issues. They will have to handle the legal issues. We have technical persons who are going also to help us to develop a change management strategy. So we are doing it carefully. Mm. And indeed, we want to make sure those who will lose jobs will be canceled first. Mm. They will be resettled using a, um, a severance package. And those who will accept to work with us will continue working with us in the ministries. Mm. Yes. All right, we are actually breaking down the modalities surrounding the rationalization of government agencies, commissions, and also authorities right here on NTV Uganda with the State Minister for Public Service, Honorable Mugasa Grace Mary. She is not alone. We also do have the Acting Commissioner in Charge of Institutional Assessment, Mr. Sifuna Fred Bo. This conversation shall largely take a break and return shortly with more. Keep it here. Once he All right, welcome back and many thanks for staying with us right here on NTV Uganda. We're talking about the rationalization of agencies, commissions, authorities and so forth, including public expenditure to actually ensure effective service delivery in that regard. In my I do have Honorable Mugasa Grace Mary, the State Minister for Public Service and also the Institutional Assessment Acting Commissioner at the Public Service Ministry, that is Mr. Sifuna Fred Bob. Thank you for staying with us right here on NTV Uganda. Of course, Honorable Mugase, let's continue. You were telling us about the challenges and at some point you told us about the mitigation factors that are being birthed by the Public Service Ministry or the government yes. to move ahead with this rationalization. Yes. Give us examples of which agencies that will be merged, mainstreamed, or having their functions transferred. Yes. Uh, the, the, uh, there are many, many agencies that will be merged, mainstreamed, mm. and transferred. But I'm just going to give you examples, only two examples mm -hmm. of uh, the, the, the agencies that will be merged. Mm -hmm. uh, Uganda Investment Authority, Uganda Export Promotion, Uganda Free Zones Authority will be merged into one authority mm -hmm. because they do almost the same activities. Mm -hmm. Then uh, Electricity Generation Company uh, Limited, Uganda Electricity Transmission Company, Uganda Electricity Distribution Company. They will be merged because they are the same. Indeed. Then which agencies will be mainstreamed? I'm just giving examples. Um, um, Microfinance Regulatory Authority, Uganda Property Holdings Limited, Tax Appeals Tribunal, and this will be mainstreamed into Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. Mm. Then, another example of uh, the mainstreamed functions, mm. non-performing assets, recovery trust, non-performing um, non assets, recovery tribunal, they are the same actually. Mm. Mm. Departed Asians Custodian Board, National Rotaries and Gaming Regulatory, but this one still has a contention mm. because it is income generating. Mm. Those will be um, under Mainstream. Ministry mm. of, of Finance. Mm. Then what will be transferred? Mm. They, they transfer the functions. Uh, U Uganda Qualifications Framework to National Council for Higher Education and the Kiambogo Teacher Curriculum to National Curriculum Development Center. Mm. So this will be transferred mm. into the Ministry Indeed. of Education. Yeah. Then we are going to abolish Equal Opportunities Commission and transfer the functions to Human Rights Commission mm. because they do the same thing. Are they doing really the same yes, thing? Yes, they are doing that. They are human rights. Uh, Uganda Human Rights Commission is focusing on the issue of human rights. Yes. And uh, Equal Opportunities Commission is focusing on the issue of equity. Equal, equal equality. opportunities is also a human mm. right. Mm. Equity is a human right. Mm. So they are doing almost the same thing. So they are going to work together. Mm. But, but we've had some equal resistance from Equal Opportunities yes, Commission. Of course. They were because like, we don't want to be merged with the Human, Uganda Human Rights Commission. But what we are getting right now is the complete abolishment of the yes. EOC. Yeah. One, aren't you afraid that you're going to be losing skills no. in this regard? We are not going to, to lose the skills mm. because these people will be working together. Mm. Those who have skills will be taken into uh, uh, Human Rights Commission. They won't be losing their jobs. They won't be losing mm. their jobs, except those ones which are duplicated. Mm. Yes. All right. Uh, Mr. Sefuna, go ahead. The cabinet decision said mm. transfer the functions of Equal Opportunities Commission mm. to Human Rights Commission mm. and abolish it. We are not losing out on the technical. All the individuals 
it's, you're going to we are transplanting the technical functions I see. of equity and whatever you want to call it. Hmm. To human rights. Mm -hmm. There is as a department or the directorate so human to operate, rights, gender to equality, continue doing what they have been doing wonderful. under different institutional arrangements. I see. Yes. What it could be lost out, maybe the board members mm -hmm. and so on. Instead of having board members for human rights, mm -hmm. board members for equal opportunities, as a way of saving on the payments that go to those people and, and overheads have one board. Indeed. Yes. One of the other contestations surrounding this rationalization, Mr. Sifuna, includes the loss of human resource that is killed. Isn't this worrying to the technocrats or even uh, the leaders within the Ministry of Government? The what? The is, law. Isn't this worrying to you, mm -hmm. the human resource that will be lost as a result of the rationalization? As much as possible. Hmm. What we are doing is to minimize that loss. I see. Like my minister is saying, hmm. I'll talk about the Opportunity Commission. Mm. The technical function is there. Forget about the administrative first. Will not be lost. And the people have been performing them are moving with the transferred functions. But, and after cabinet approval, mm. we are going to embark on what we call a functional analysis. I see. Because the functions are different. There are those of policy nature, there are those which are routine, the frequency of execution. Hmm. Because once you do the function analysis, it uh, informs the workload. How much work are you transferring from institution A hmm. to institution B? It's the amount of work that you use to determine the, the, the workforce. How many people do you need to perform that function? Hmm. At their various seniority levels, how many directors do you need? Hmm. Commissioners up the lowest. So as much as the technical people, and also the non-technical, the human source, the records, and so on. We look, we are not just saying go away. We look around in other entities which have been retained mm. as agencies or ministries mm -hmm. and see which, if they have the skills for the jobs that exist in those entities, mm. then we fix them. Like we did, he showed you about science mm. when Vince of was abolished, mm. the non-technical staff those who belong to me for public service were sent to us for, and we have deployed them. Those who belong to Office of the President were sent there. So it's only in the unlikely event that we cannot fit you anywhere that, that you, you can be go. sent hmm. home, but with a golden handshake hmm. to start a new life. Hmm. Besides the threat of the possibility of, you, of losing uh, very skilled uh, human resource, what are the other challenges that you uh, actually envisage uh, dogging the implementation of this rationalization, Mr. Sifunan? The challenges mm. we expect is the commitment. Because some of these things, at the end of the day, when the real implementation starts, you raise this question of savings. Initially, we are, in the short time, we are saving about... 900.7 billion shillings. 900.7 billion, billion in the short term, in the short term will, will be saved as a result of uh, this yeah, yeah, analysis. Yes. And in the long term? In the long term, we have not done that because there are some ministries which rent, mm. which buy rented in premises. Mm. So that, that, that cost will have to be removed. Mm. Some of them have got assets, vehicles and so on. Mm. Some of them have boards. Like I told you, this use, this council is under means of labor. Mm. There are about six of them. This board, this council. So the pay and remuneration for those. So when we put all those things together, that's when we shall be able to tell you mm. how much will be saved both in the medium and in the long term. Indeed. Yes. Honorable Mugasa, where will the energies, the money that is going to be accrued from this rationalization, diverted? Uh, thank you very much mm. for that very good question. But before I answer that Please one, do. the the fear that we are going to lose human resource mm. and they, their skills. Mm. Those very human resource who went to agencies came from ministries. Indeed. So, so just they, simply are, being they are going back, back home. home. <laughs> they are going back home with their skills, with their corporate governance, yes. and with their en enhanced skills that mm. they have acquired. Indeed. Then uh, losing track of the money that will be saved. Uh, you know, as government, we have uh, uh, different roles. Mm. Money is always appropriated by parliament. Uh, when we save this money, of course, we shall take it back to, 
it will go back to the budget mm. and it will go back to the consolidated fund and parliament will appropriate. Mm. But the, the most pressing need as, as we talk now mm. is enhancement of salaries of all our civil servants. Mm. If we can do that, then we will have saved this country. Mm. Yes. Indeed. Let's, let's get to that sticky issue of the salaries. How will these salaries be harmonized as we move forward with the implementation of this roadmap from 2021 all the way to 2023? And the issue of running contracts, how is it going to be, you know, circumvented? Uh, you know, these people have been uh, working on contractual uh, mm -hmm. obligations and some of them we will wait for their contracts to get expired. But uh, our technical persons represented by Bob Sifuna here, are going back into job evaluation. I see. What they have you been doing? Yes. How much of value is it? Yes. Mm. And then they begin allocating salaries mm. accordingly, according to the structures, according to the workload. Mm. And they are going to do that very well mm. because they've been doing it for a long time. Indeed. Yes. Mr. Sifuna, do you expect cutbacks on salary or will they be maintained? Go ahead. Rian. No, no. The Constitution, there's a provision in mm. the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda, which says you cannot adjust anybody's salary mm. to their disadvantage. I see. In other words, you cannot adjust that salary to their advantage. If I'm getting increase. some four million from the Equal Opportunities Commission, uh, when I join Uganda Human Rights Commission, it sh should be maintained or even increased. <laughs> that is where I'm coming. All right. We are, we are trying to rationalize jobs across the board. Indeed after doing a job evaluation. The job evaluation is the assessment or determination of the worth of every job. What is the worth of my job vis-a-vis -vis the worth of a job of an accountant? Indeed. So that every job is, a pay, is paid according to this worth. Indeed. In the Human Rights Commission, you have been, you have been serving under contractual terms, mm. earning 10 million, for instance. But at the end of the day, when we harmonize salary to say, okay, the job that you've been performing in the Human Rights Commission and which has gone to the mainstream is five million. We, 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 we give it to you, say, sir, at the end of your contract, we say, are you willing to accept these new terms? If you're not willing to accept, hmm. then it will be up to you. You are, you are getting yourself out. Because at the end of the day, there must be harmony. Hmm. You cannot have children, these ones are happy, these are not happy. Hmm. We need to harmonizing and the equitable payment of salary it's not about uh, equality. We're not saying we're not saying we are going to pay equal salaries, but there must be equitability in the in terms of paying salaries. So mm. that at the end of the day, everybody is happy with what they take home. Indeed. But uh, we don't. We shall not interfere with your contract. Let it run up the end. Mm. Then here, where you are going, you are going to serve under different terms and condition of service. Mm. One of them is that the salary there is different. It's not that we have lowered it. Mm. We have not lowered your salary. It's just different. It's just different because you are shifting to new terms and conditions of service where you are going. I if agree. you don't accept, it's like if I interview you and, and you are successful in the interview, I say this is the salary, sir. Oh, madam, mm. are you willing to accept? Indeed. If you are not, then you, you, you give way. Indeed. But the beauty about that... Honorable Mugasa. The beauty about that... Mm that these people have been working on contracts. They had no expectation mm -hmm. of pension. Mm -hmm. But this time around, they are going to join those who had gone away. They are going back to the mainstream civil service where they will be permanent mm -hmm. and pensionable. F away and from the contract base. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, they More have job security. The yes, they mm -hmm. have job security. Yeah. And indeed, they, they expect gratuity. They expect many things from government. Indeed. So in so a nutshell, they shouldn't be fighting they this shouldn't, rationalization. They should come back home. Uh, let's continue egging them on to actually accept this rationalization and talk yes. about the issue of pensions and compensation and management benefits in that regard. Yeah. Uh, about pensions, mm. uh, I think Bob Sifona mm. is going to give us uh, how are we going to handle the pensions and benefits. Mm. How are you going to manage them? Mm. Uh, he can give us his technical view and I will give the political view. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> pensions. Pensions and compensation In the means of public management. service, yes. we, have we have decentralized mm. payment of pensions and payments of salaries. Mm. But the issue you are raising is when you come, they have been getting contract gratuit. 
under their terms and the conditions of service. Others have been under NSSF, which is a provident fund. Indeed. You, it's a one of payment. Mm. When you reach 55 or whatever, they pay you at once. But civil service, mm. they pay you CPG, Committed Pension Supertreat, mm. which is one third of your total benefits. In other words, if your total benefits are 90, 90 million, the, the CPG is our more. lump sum is one third of that. Then these three, uh, two thirds is what is spread out to be paid to you in terms of monthly pension. As the government increases salaries of those who are still active in the service, mm -hmm. they also increase you so that you continue earning until you die. Mm -hmm. But now, those ones who have been, who, who will join us, they will be admitted to our pension scheme. Mm -hmm. Because we pay uh, that money, uh, the, when you clock 60, which is the mandatory retirement age, Indeed. then the, the money you have accumulated, because we are now moving also to contributory for people who still have m more than five years in the service, but also who have less, we are not, that one does not apply to us. Mm -hmm. So when they join us and you work for 10 years, they compute the amount of pension that's due to you in terms of the number of years you have put in and the seniority level. I see. Mm. Yes. Mm. The political narrative, Honorable Mugasa. Yes. Pensions and benefits management will be done in line with the relevant laws of mm. the Republic of Uganda. Mm. There is a department responsible for compensation in the Ministry of Public Service. Mm. So uh, you be rest assured that the benefits will be managed properly. Mm. Yes. Indeed. And uh, before I let you go, any yes. anticipated uh, challenges you might meet along the way while you implement the rationalization policy? Yes. Mm -hmm. Any anticipated challenge? An anticipated challenge is politicking. I see. You know, some politicians have decided to, to use rationalization as a political tool to demean government. I see. But government is meaning well for the citizens of Uganda. Because we want to make savings mm. and channel it towards service delivery. Mm. Indeed, uh, under the public sector transformation and NDP 3 plus mm. the NRE manifesto, we want to deliver actual services mm. to the actual citizens down at the grassroots. Mm. Instead of enjoying ourselves in Kampala, uh, going for foreign trips, benchmarking every time mm. and yet we don't implement we are now focused on service delivery mm. yes maybe there's a challenge mm. i don't know the challenge but she knows my mm. minister here yes the threats from politicians i see the, about a month ago i will not name names there's a member of parliament mm. from this uh, district between masaduengo mm. She came and I think she's related to one of the bosses in the affected institutions, mm. looking for one of our staff, alleging that she was a noob and all this kind of thing. Mm. These things are affect, going to affect the image of government. Where is, I'm going to mobilize other members of parliament to come and then that meeting was chaired by our senior minister. She said, no, mm. that one we cannot allow. That officer is doing the right thing. And also getting threats on phone, mm. you people. Uh, uh, but of course, for us, as public officers, we are in the means of public service, in the service of the public, mm. and we are also implementers of government decisions. Mm. It is not our business to mm. question government decision, mm. whether that decision is bad or not. Mm. For us, we operate within the political context to implement. Mm. But we can advise here and there. So we're also seeing that threat. But of late, I think it's coming down. And indeed. Uh, there is another, uh, uh, Mr. Moderator, mm. there's another one of uh, some agencies are making appeals, trying to justify why they should remain autonomous. I see. And uh, as a cabinet subcommittee, we are not mandated to change anything mm. until we take even the appeals to cabinet. I want to 
reassure our technical persons mm. that your work is not politicking. Leave politics to us. Indeed. For you, you do the directive <laughs> of the president Indeed. and you implement whatever we tell you to implement mm. because we mean well for this country and the politicking side we shall handle properly. And of course the implementation roadmap for this rationalization shall stretch from 2021 this year all the way to 2023. Yes. Uh, yes. Now, would like to know the role the Ministry of Public Services is to play in the rationalization of this policy and also the strategies that you've put in place to ensure the smooth running of the same rationalization policy. Honorable Mugaza. The rationalization policy is going to be run properly by this ministry mm. because we are mandated mm. to do human resource management and our technical persons mm. plus other technical persons from other ministries are working together already mm. to make sure they harmonize the human resource they harmonize the salaries, the structures, and give us a report. Mm. Then uh, we as political, political players, mm. we are working together as well. As I told you, we have seven ministries, and we are working together as ministers to make sure we harmonize mm. everything and make sure by 2023 mm. everything is done according to the plan of cabinet. Mm. The strategies you're putting together? The strategies we've put together, uh, we, of course, we, we have meetings. Mm. We normally meet. Some of these technical persons have been meeting on Zoom. Uh, we have had consultations. Mm. We have invited the legal personnel to give us technical mm. guidance. We have consulted even those affected agencies. Hmm. Some of them, of course, are, are trying to justify why they should stand alone. Hmm. But uh, the strategy is to whichever was mentioned in the research hmm. is going to be mainstream, except those who have made uh, those who have made uh, their appeals. Hmm. Maybe they will be looked into. Hmm. But in most cases, we have agreed every agency that was earmarked for rationalization Indeed. should be should be taken. But ex except some hmm. are income generating Indeed. agencies those income generating agencies i cannot make a decision now and i cannot commit the subcommittee but cabinet will make sure they also scrutinize Indeed. and uh, Give us a way forward. Away from rationalization, Honorable Mugasa, you wanted to talk about the issue of delayed pension and also the issue of nepotism that is actually uh, taking center stage within government. It's largely away from rationalization, but you wanted to actually share your pointers on mm. this in a minute. Talk uh, to the country. It is, it is indeed away mm. from rationalization, mm. but it is uh, affecting our services across mm. board in the mm. entire service. Uh, pensions are managed at the Ministry of Public Service. Mm. But in the recent past, public service ministry decentralized mm. the management of payment of salaries, the management of pension payment. It is largely the work of local governments, those agencies, mm. to make sure they streamline the payment. Mm. They can always come for appeal to the ministry, but we are not largely responsible now at this point in time nepotism. apart from mm. nepotism in giving out jobs mm. it has been an outcry that the commissions it is an outcry from the public and we are going to investigate this that they they attach value monetary value to the jobs that are advertised now supposing you have passed well your exams and you have the competence, but you don't have the money to pay. Mm. What will happen? Indeed. We that shall means lose we shall lose out person. on the skills. We shall lose out on good people who can deliver services. It is a very bad practice, and I really want to move down together with my minister and make sure we streamline everything to make sure the Ugandans get what they deserve. Many thanks, Honorable Mugasa Grace Mary, the Honorable State Minister for Public Service, and also Mr. Sifuna Fred Bob, the Acting Commissioner in Charge of Institution Assessment at the Ministry of Public Service. Thank you both for having made the time to speak to us right here on NTV Uganda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, dear viewer, thank you very much for keeping it NTV Uganda. In a few minutes, it's going to be NTV at one. Keep it here. Good afternoon.